Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. One of my very first videos back in October 2017 looked at the hypothesis that there was once a second sphinx at Giza, which, based on historical writings, I concluded was probably a mud brick construction on the other side of the Nile, much younger than the Great Sphinx and probably had been naturally wiped out by the migrating River Nile. But that video didn't consider the hypothesis that was put forward in recent years by Dr. Rada Abdul Halim, in that there could still be the remains of a second sphinx on the Giza Plateau. It is a claim that Dr. Rada has written a paper about, and he presented his ideas in 2016 at the International Scientific Conference in Egypt. I had previously looked at this hypothesis and dismissed it, but I thought it was worth revisiting Dr. Rader's ideas because, second sphinx or not, the structure in question looks to date back to pre-dynastic times and is therefore an important piece of evidence when researching the true origins of the Giza monuments. So, what is the claim? Well, it centres on this limestone rock formation about 250 metres from the Great Sphinx, and adjacent to the tomb of Kenkawe, which I've discussed in some detail in another recent video. Only one side of this second sphinx is visible. The other side is either buried by hardened sand or wasn't carved from the bedrock in the first place. I always thought that this claim by Dr. Rader was quite a stretch, but maybe I was a little too hasty to judge. As you can see from this picture, the proposed head is heavily eroded and damaged, but you can't help but see some similarity between this and the Great Sphinx. Although I'm not yet convinced, for clarity, for the rest of this video, I will be referring to this rock formation as the Second Sphinx, and I will give my own opinion on whether or not I think it could be at the end of this video. As we all know, the Great Sphinx is a statue that looks like a lion or possibly a jackal with a human head carved into the limestone bedrock. Some believe that the Sphinx was once coated in plaster and covered with paint. The latter hypothesis is certainly true, as it is recorded in various historical accounts, and you can still see the remains of colour near one of the ears. Both Sphinxes are located on the west bank of the River Nile, with the Great Sphinx on the north side of the Khafre Pyramid Causeway, next to the Valley Temple and the Sphinx Temple. The second sphinx is also located next to an important structure, the so-called Tomb of Kenkawe, which I certainly don't believe was a dynastic pyramidal structure for a queen as we are led to believe. But there is a road from the second sphinx that, like the Great Sphinx, also leads to the Pyramid of Khafre. The Great Sphinx and the second one do share some similarities. The first structure is roughly 73.5 metres long, whilst the second is 71.5. The height of the highest part of the head is 20 metres on both, and the paws of the Great Sphinx are 20 metres long, whilst on the second Sphinx they are 15 metres. These measurements are certainly similar, especially as both have been subjected to large amounts of erosion. Like the Great Sphinx, the second one is also carved from one single block of bedrock limestone. And while Dr. Rader believes it was carved into the shape that we see, others believe it is a mere coincidence and is just the remains of a quarry that was used to cut limestone for the construction of tombs that we find around the Giza Plateau. But is this really just a coincidence? Dr. Rader thinks not. The Dream Stealer that we find stood between the paws of the Great Sphinx certainly shows two sphinxes facing opposite directions and Raider's second sphinx is looking west and not east, like the Great Sphinx. Of course we don't know if historically the Dream Stealer is recording two actual physical sphinx monuments, but if it is, there are not many candidates for a second one, unless of course it has been eroded or quarried away. In the body of the second sphinx formation, there are ten holes or entrances, and at least some are certainly ancient doorways into the structure. Dr. Rader covered many of them with iron gates to stop people entering and possibly damaging the interior. Inside the second sphinx structure, he discovered unexcavated pits filled with sand, long rooms with side doors, corridors, and amazingly, there are possibly two wells. 
Stones line the area around one of them to cover cracks and openings, and Dr. Raider surmises that due to this, the excavations into the structure are clearly ancient. What I learned when researching the so-called Tomb of Kenkawe is that this structure was purposefully separated from the Bedrock Second Sphinx formation on its northern side. The corridor that was formed between the Kenkawe Tomb and the Second Sphinx is certainly created by people, and not nature, and you can watch my previous video to find out more. On the northern face of the Kenkawe tomb, we see undeniable proof of rainwater erosion, which dates the creation of the tomb of Kenkawe to be pre-dynastic and synonymous with the age of the Sphinx enclosure and the perimeter wall of the Khafre pyramid, which are also badly eroded by rainfall. We know that we haven't seen this amount of rainfall in Egypt for many thousands of years, and therefore the Sphinx enclosure, the Khafre pyramid wall, and the tomb of Kenkawe must be at least seven to 10,000 years old. And the second Sphinx formation? We can see high levels of wind erosion and weathering patterns, but if we look close enough, we can see the remnants of vertical gullies, rain erosion, although the desert winds have removed much of the detail. I'm in no doubt that this second Sphinx formation is as ancient as its Great Sphinx counterpart. But is it really a second Sphinx? Well, personally, I don't think that it is, and I think this claim by Dr. Raider is simply a way to commercialise his research to gain extra interest and also possibly funding. I personally don't see a great resemblance to the Great Sphinx, and to me, from aerial pictures, its northern side is still fully connected to the bedrock. I don't think that it is compacted sand as he thinks it might be, but of course I cannot know this for sure. It could be an abandoned construction project, but for me, that doesn't seem very in keeping with the rest of Giza. But not being a Sphinx shouldn't disappoint us too much. Due to the fact that there are unexcavated internal chambers in this rock formation, and because it displays weathering patterns similar to other truly ancient pre-dynastic Giza structures, I do think that further investigation is necessary, and I believe it does tie into the lost Giza origins we are all searching for. If there are two wells inside of it, as Dr. Raider believes, then this would certainly have been an important location for ancient people. Dr. Raider is calling for a ground penetrating radar scan, as well as excavation and preservation of the site, and this would surely give us the answers we need. Although, knowing Giza, it will probably just raise yet more questions, but hopefully point to a truly ancient history of Egypt. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.